Today, we commemorate a civil rights march from 1965. On hand is civil rights icon and Georgia Congressman John Lewis. Congressman Lewis had his skull broken by white police officers during that 1965 march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. Previously, it had been unclear whether the congressman would attend today's march. He was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer back in December. Also marching across the bridge today are several presidential candidates and faith leaders. 55 years ago, demonstrators there were attacked as they tried to cross the bridge. That attack is now known as Bloody Sunday. It's one of the events that's credited with sparking passage of the Voting Rights Act that same year after images of that brutal attack shocked the nation into action. Joining us from Selma on the line is MSNBC's Joy Reid, the host of AM Joy. And Joy, I can only imagine how excited people are to see Congressman Lewis up and about at an event that meant so much to the nation and personally to him. Well, it is an absolute... Uh a sea of people here. I have to tell you guys, I have been, this is the second time that I've been down to Selma for the commemoration. Um, normally, there's a faith and politics commemoration that takes place next week that's got a lot of members of Congress. Of course, Barack Obama has spoken here, you know, and it was so momentous when he was here in 2015 for that commemoration. But I have to tell you guys, this, this one feels special. This is the local jubilee. This is the community's celebration, commemoration of the heroism of Young people like John Lewis, who was 25 years old at the time, and people even younger than him. There were children who marched over that bridge, people who took body blows, who wound up in the hospital, who had to flee to the, the housing community that literally I'm staring at right now. Um, and this year they decided to do something special. They're allowing this march to be led only by women. And so two of the female candidates for president, two of the women who are running for president of the United States, Amy Klobuchar and uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, two senators, are standing at the front of this line. They're going to lead this march along with women who come from all over the country. I was just talking with one of the organizers who said that people have flown in from all over the country to be a part of this, this march. And this is a special one. This is the community march. It's the local march. And it's, it's just huge. We just listened to Stacey Abrams speak inside Brown Chapel Memorial which is where the march began in 1965. Um, Michael Bloomberg was sitting in the audience and had quite an uncomfortable time after he was introduced by the pastor of the church. Um, Joe Biden sitting on the dais, showing the stark difference between the relationship that he has, the long relationship that he has with the people of this community, sitting on the dais, Reverend Sharpton on the dais, Stacey Abrams on the dais, Michael Bloomberg, audience. And so it's been a really fascinating year, um, and this commemoration is so important. And I'll tell you one more thing, guys. They, this commemoration was moved to this date to make sure it's before Super Tuesday, so that this year it's not just a commemoration. This is the community organizing to vote on Super Tuesday. Alabama is a Super Tuesday state. Uh, when people are coming here and paying homage to this community, they're also showing the respect to the voters in this community. So. This Tuesday is going to be bigger than it normally even is, and it's already a momentous and huge occasion. As we look down at the live shots from Selma, you can see Senator Elizabeth Warren speaking close in the ear of the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Just behind her to the left on that shot is Senator Amy Klobuchar, who, as Joy mentioned, are two of the people who will be marching at the front of this march. Tom Steyer was in an earlier shot. He suspended his campaign in South Carolina last night, but vowed that he would continue to work on issues of racial justice and economic justice and environmental justice as well. And so he is there today. You can see the crowd of people lined up getting ready to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge, much the way that civil rights protesters tried to cross the bridge the first time and were repelled by an angry mob that included young white men who'd been deputized that day to push back civil rights protesters. That pushback prompted the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to come for a later march, and more marches followed, and eventually the country was pushed, spurred into action on the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.